GLP-1s actually work on specific, they work on the atrophy gene, they work on specific genes in muscle to retain muscle, to retain muscle, that's proven. Also bone density, do you know that? They work on osteoblasts to keep bone. Do you hear people talking about this? Hell no, because they're not, they're, they're out there just promoting themselves because they can just follow a tagline. The emphasis I'm trying to create here is everybody wants that one magic thing. Well, yeah, this starts the process, has these amazing things, but you got to get other things going. And, you know, obviously we've talked about this, the protein, you have to increase the protein to compensate because people aren't going to want to eat right at the beginning. So you have all these mechanisms that you can stop that. And in fact, you can, you can build muscle on GLP-1s and you can build incredible lean mass on GLP-1. Oh boy, this episode, we dive deep uh, into Ozempic or the generic name semaglutide. This is the miracle fat loss peptide everybody's talking about. So we got the world's top expert on the subject. This is the guy that really wrote the book on peptides, Dr. William Seeds. He is the person, he's the man when it comes to this topic. So we had him on the show and it's like, listen, is this really a miracle fat loss compound? Like, is it doing everything that they're saying it's doing? You're not going to believe what he said. It's actually, believe it or not, a lot better than some of the stuff you're hearing. It actually blew our minds. Pretty crazy stuff. By the way, if you want to work with peptides, work with a doctor, get your stuff from a pharmacy. Don't go online and get research chemicals and get weird stuff. Go to mphormones.com. Our partners over there, doctors will work with you and you'll get legit stuff. And yes, they do work with these GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide, uh, Ozempic, and others. So again, it's mphormones.com. We're also running a sale this month. MAPS Starter, the beginner workout program, is 50% off. And the MAPS Starter Bundle, this is MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Prime, is also 50% off. By the way, if you leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, we'll pick one of you to get those for free. So one of you will get those two for free. Now everybody else, it's half off. If you're interested in signing up, uh, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Dr. Seeds, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, we got you in person this time. You uh, Do you work out? <laughs> Seeing you in person, out like, of his shirt. this guy definitely lifts. Yeah, How long have you been, been training for? Oh, uh, boy. Since I got my first Sears weight set in- Sears? In third grade. Oh, wow. Like the plastic ones yeah, with, with the, the cement sand in it. Plastics with the bench and everything. And I, I remember my- it was my big Christmas gift that I wanted. And because uh, I used to see this thing on these bubble gum wrappers where you could get a weight set. And I didn't know you could get it. And my father got me a Sears weight set and I had no idea how to use it. He didn't. <laughs> and uh, I just started there. Wow. That's awesome. And that's that's true. There's a whole generation wow. listening right now that have no idea yeah. what Sears is. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the catalogs. You used to buy them online. <laughs> yeah. So this was back in the- what Was it Jack LaLanne who was promoting that back in the day? No, it was just Sears, I think. Just Sears, Sears. like yeah. without it's, any instruction. You got everything. Yeah. Every, you had a catalog that was this big. And if you needed something, you got it from Sears. Yeah. And uh it was uh, it was amazing when I, I I still remember it coming downstairs and you know seeing what Santa brought me and it was just it was awesome. Man. Se Sears was like the the Costco of today. Right? Yes. Like <laughs> any idea why they went under? You know, Doug. I think because Costco and Amazon. Yeah, it must have been the competition. Compete. They, they couldn't compete with it, with, even no. though they had their foothold like that. I know. You used to buy tools there. Remember Everything. Yeah. Yeah. You, get your, you get your hair cut, I think, even. <laughs> yeah. You get your tires rotated. Uh, yeah. and then, and then, they, <laughs> hedge trimmers. That, yeah. That's actually where, this, you guys bring back crazy memories. Yeah. I, that's where I first learned that I needed a spotter because oh, yeah. I, I, had all, I thought it looked so great and I took the thing off and I got trapped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it was bad. We've all done Yeah, that, I had so. to learn that uh, yeah. whole. <laughs> the shimmy. Shimmy or, or yeah. The roll Slide down. under, yeah. Um, so this was in the 70s? Uh, this would have been in the late 60s. Wow, yeah. that's great. So let's see, at the time you're looking at like Muscle Builder Magazine. This it, is Larry have, Scott and then Arnold later and all those. Were you following any of those guys? No, I mean, I was a little kid. I, we didn't have any of those things. All I knew is I wanted on the gum. There was this guy called Bazooka Joe or something yeah. who he he wanted to be strong. And I'm like, gosh, he can do all this. I, I want to be like that. And uh, <laughs> That's awesome. And, and Pi Pi. 
Yeah, of course. Do you guys Popeye. remember Popeye? Popeye? He ate his spinach. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, of course. And he gets strong. I, of course. Are you kidding me? That's why yeah. I ate spinach. I hated it. That's why I yeah. ate spinach. Yeah. I had to eat spinach, but it never really worked. And yeah. they say these ads and stuff don't influence kids. Um, totally, no, yeah, totally influenced. Me. Totally. So, so this is great because you have a unique perspective. This is why we like um, you on the show. Is that you obviously are an expert in your field, but you also are very experienced when it comes to fitness and training and strength training. And sometimes there's a bit of a, a divide, right? Like we'll talk to a scientist or a doctor and you could tell that they don't have any personal experience yeah. or they haven't really worked with Application anybody. Application isn't there. Yeah, in that space. And uh, and the reason why this is important, and I'd love just some commentary on this before we get to the, the, the main topic, is that uh, people who are very consistent with exercise, people who are trying to build muscle and eat in a way to do so and all that stuff, it doesn't, it's, it's a bit of a different category. Like to give you an example, um, we look at uh, things that may drive, let's say, cancer. And so they'll say things like, we need to avoid, um, you know, stimulating, uh, you know, um, rapamycin, uh, you know, mammalian uh, rapamycin, what's the, whatever the, the, the chemical is, because it could cause cancer growth. But that also builds muscle. mTOR. mTOR, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Mammalian uh, target rapamycin. But that also builds muscle, right? Or they'll right. say something like a really low protein diet can cause, you know, improve improvements in longevity with with animals. Well, and, and I guess if you're sedentary and you don't do anything, maybe. But with athletes, I don't think that's the case at all. So you got you got both, which puts you in a pretty cool category. Absolutely, I I love I love what you just said because there's so much truth to that, and there's so many people that go the wrong way, and they're even <laughs> even my my peers. You know, and people who are just focused in one vertical area and know a lot sometimes mis you know mis misuse the concepts to make assumptions that really aren't true. And you just you hit it on the head with that. Excellent. Yeah. So that brings us to a, a so peptides and peptide science has been around for a little while, starting to become much more mainstream, especially right now. And you could probably place the notoriety or the, the I guess, the awareness squarely on the GLP-1 agonist class of peptides or, or Ozempic, the brand name of semaglutide. Um, it's like everywhere now. It's exploding. And what we just talked about, I think, is, an, is a great place to start because um, let's start with uh, some of the articles. Because everybody now knows, oh, they cause weight loss. I think that's accepted now. It's all over the media. But then we have articles saying, oh, it caused just as much muscle loss. Or you see these terms like Ozempic face, you know, or, you know, I, I read an article on that where people's skin looks to be sagging or whatever. Um, this, this muscle loss really is not, this is something you want to look at if you're sedentary, don't change your diet, just go on it versus someone who does. Is that, would that be, uh, I guess, accurate? Correct. Okay. So let's talk about um, some agglutide and GLP-1 agonists. How do they work? What were they developed for? And then let's get into what they're being used for now. Sure. So, so the GLP ones have been around for for actually a quite a long time. And I started lecturing to the, our physicians around the the world here probably about eight, ten years ago, where GLP ones just started to really make their their push into more on the side of um, the what we know about right now as far as type 2 diabetes. But GLP-1s are um, have been around for the study. They started in the study of neurodegenerative disease. Um, that's, that's where the, the peptide was recognized to have considerable effects because they're GLP-1 receptors in, the, in certain cells in the brain, microglial cells, astrocytes, so forth, that have an influence on controlling inflammation and they were looking at this, this avenue of the potential of GLP-1s in, in neurodegenerative or early cognitive dysfunction, um, Alzheimer's, things like that. And now, why did they start there? Was it the, infl the inflammation? The inflammation? Just the GL Just just uh, scientists that at the time had a uh, had some. Um, had the the specific receptors that they were looking at that they felt could influence 
this immune cell in the brain that has a great influence. A microglial cell has a great influence on, on basically inflammation in the brain. Got it, it. And it's a, it's like the master uh, house cleaner of the brain. It keeps things kind of intact, but it can also change. It can do something called a polarization of into a bad cell that can start producing a lot of pro-inflammatory things that, that actually start setting off problems in the brain. So they, they saw that, uh, or they, they show that GLP ones could influence that inflammatory state of the cell and convert it back into a, um, an anti-inflammatory type of cell versus a pro-inflammatory cell, which was incredible. And, um, so they, they started in, um, studying this more in, in trials and they started seeing other incredible changes um, that they kind of, we kind of knew about anyways, because GLP ones are made, we make them in, in our stomach and we, we produce these, these are natural peptides that we make that have an influence on increasing insulin and improving glucose absorption and, you know, making, making the, they're basically, it's something that you secrete once you put something in your mouth and you start eating, it's, it's something normal. It's an incretin. It's you produce it to help you digest and utilize glucose. I see. Okay. So anyways, they, because of those, that aspect also, they started seeing, wow, these people that were, were doing these trials and they're losing weight and their glucose sensitivity is better. Their insulin is better. It's like, Oh my <coughs> gosh. And so big pharma said, are you kidding me? This big business in diabetes, why are we going this route? And so a big shift started progressing more into diabetes and which was incredible and which, which was needed um, because it actually, it's a peptide that actually makes changes that are so significant. And this is why I get so frustrated when you've got, you, you've got all these people out in this world who have a little bit of knowledge that are talking about things that are like what you just said, they're misusing concepts to, to make something not look good here. You've got a peptide that is actually something that finally, you know, the, the first big thing that came along for diabetes was insulin. That was a peptide. People don't know that's a peptide. That was one of the first peptides that ever developed got the Nobel Peace Prize, did all these amazing things. Insulin changed the world. And now we have these GLP-1s that have an even greater influence because, because what they do is they actually change not just improving glucose, not just improving insulin sensitivity, not just improving efficiencies of the cell like AMPK, and all of these things that improve mitochondrial biogenesis and improve fat cell function, improve uh, muscle cell function, improve, you know, you name it. These cells actually, or these peptides, what do they do? They change phenotype. Mm -hmm. Phenotype. Phenotype. Now, for people who don't know, phenotype just means a cell has a genetic code. It has genes that tell it what to do and it makes, let's say a cell makes a certain protein, right? That genetic code is there to make that protein. Well, if something goes wrong in the cell where it can't make that protein right, that's a phenotypical change, meaning, you know, that there's radiation or there's something wrong with the cell that, that causes that the genome's still the same, but it just doesn't make that protein right. So that's a phenotypical change. Well, that's what happens with diabetes. You get a, you get a phenotypical change in a cell, phenotypes change. And just by giving insulin, you can make them better and they can live, but you don't change the phenotype. Hmm. But GLP ones change the phenotype. Oh, this that is more is the root. This is, this goes beyond, yeah, this is the root cause. This is where peptides, this is where, when we started lecturing on all of these peptides years and years ago, the key to success in medicine and the future of the world is get to the root of these problems and, and actually don't treat things symptomatically, which we, which is, you know, Hey, we're, we're doing great, but let's, can we do better? 
And so GLP-1s change phenotype. That's, guys, I can't, I can't tell you how excited I get every time I get to say that. That Have you heard that yet? Has anybody no, said I've that? No, I've actually, I've not <laughs> heard that. Blew Nobody's my mind. ever said yeah. anything like that. Now, okay, so that right away, wow. what comes up for me is the potential politics involved in something that actually solves the problem. Because sometimes, uh, and this is a, 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 the pessimistic attitude I have towards Western medicine is, you know, sometimes I feel like our goal isn't to solve, it's to just continue to treat so you're a return customer are we seeing some of this political battle between this because it is that incredible? Like from what you're saying, it almost seems like we would we would stop using insulin and go straight here only. Or is there still going to be a case for insulin? Too? There's always going to be a case for insulin. For you know, we're we're talking about this is the tip of the iceberg, really. The, this GLP ones because these GLP ones we continue to modify them. Like uh, how do I say? So I, I travel all over the world and I get to speak with all the guys that are on the cutting edge of doing all of the greatest research on all of these type of molecules. For instance, the the GLP-1s are, they're being upgraded every year. Something is different. Like, you know, we went from semaglutide, a GLP-1 to terazepatide, which is a GLP-1 and a GIP. It's a a glucagon inhibiting peptide and a oh wow and a uh, yeah and and a glucagon like peptide so it's it's a combination of two peptides well there's another one coming that has three in it and and so we're what I'm trying to tell you is that you know disease and issues like diabetes even type two diabetes type one it's very stratified it's there's many as there's many different aspects of how complex it is for one person versus another but but that being said these glp ones are the first step into where we're actually we can change phenotype and and i i will tell you i will tell you even more so that i think it's it's just it's not just that it's the cool i from my perspective the most amazing thing i've been able to see with this over the last you know eight ten years is how this one peptide has been the most successful peptide I've ever worked with in changing the mindset of a patient hmm. in, in every aspect of their life. It's incredible. And, and I'll, I'll add this at the end if you want. I, had, I just got back from Singapore where I met with the, one of the leading scientists in the world who just figured out something that we were seeing clinically, and I'll save that for the end if you ask me, if I remember, will blow your minds away. And she's actually coming out to talk at my Peptide World Congress later this August. But the research just keeps getting incredible on the benefits of some things that that uh, have to do with one peptide, right? It's like, yeah. well, are you kidding me? So- I, I so let me let me okay that, that I, I can go a thousand ways on this. <laughs> no, this is great. So this makes me uh, want to ask this question. I read an article and I thought, wow, this is really fascinating. This is very interesting. This is all speculation. I think it's anecdote at this point. Was, I don't think there's any research to support this. And I wonder if this is what you're alluding to. They talked about how people going on GLP one agonists lost weight, but also found that it reduced their their cravings for other bad habits mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. biting their nails smoking or cigarettes smoking cigarettes is that what you're alluding to absolutely okay wow. what's the speculation behind that because obviously there's more than just uh you know it it's improving insulin sensitivity or whatever in, in this particular regard it's influencing behaviors Something in the, in the brain. brain is yeah. it the is it that when we're i want to take a guess is it that because we're reducing inflammation in the brain, the inflammation itself, mm. it's what's triggering people wanting to, to, you know, maybe medicate themselves with different habits or whatever. hundred percent. Okay. You're on it. Inflammation. Okay. Hmm. So that's what they think, huh? Well, it's not what they think. It's true. So, wow. so, so what happens wow. is what happens in the brain, it's, it's actually in the hypothalamus and the, the science is, I mean, we, I, we spent three days, <coughs> three days in Singapore on, on the hypothalamus and all of these incredible pathways that have to do with um, 
with uh, satiety, you know, eating and uh, anorexia and gratification and right. all of these things are all interrelated in the hypothalamus. And, and, and it all comes down to this is, you're going to love this. It all comes down to a hyperactivated state of mTOR in the uh, POMC and which is uh, a pre opioid, uh, 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 melacortin protein that's a precursor for that makes a lot of these signaling agents in the hypothalamus that do all the things you wanted to do to stop eating or to eat it, it they're, they're different mechanisms mm -hmm. and I, I won't go through people will call your show and say never have me on this again because <laughs> yeah. I say right. too much so so but it comes down to this state of mTOR in the specific area of the hypothalamus and the, uh, and nobody, that's just, uh, that's just like, it's just being written right now, by the way, about this mTOR. Wow. And this is, it's, it has to do with the lepidin receptors and so forth there also, but it's all because of mTOR and how GLP ones can improve a balance in AMPK and mTOR and, and decrease that state of mTOR which is kind of, you know, it's if for your audience in, in my world, in the cell, M AMPK is like catabolic, mTOR is anabolic. Right. You got to keep them really even. And because if one goes a little off kilter, it, it starts doing too much. So if you get like, you talked about cancer, too much mTOR. Well, too much mTOR, yeah, it per, it's more proliferation, more growth, more bad things. And if you don't have enough AMPK, which is catabolic, where you break down th things to to regenerate, to rebuild, you, you got to have them even. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so my my and that comes down to even something more biochemistry and and so forth talk in something called redox, which is about NAD and NADH and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's my world. That's I'm always trying to just balance those things. Okay. And that's what you're doing with exercise is what you're doing with diet. It all comes down to that. So in the brain, and this is where now you're going to, I'm going to have to spill the beans. This, <laughs> this researcher in who's just so brilliant. And I, I couldn't, I was like a kid in a candy shop talking to her about this. She's just presenting this hasn't even written this yet. And she's telling me about how, when, uh, the GLP ones have had their effect over time on correcting some of these, let's say these circuits in the brain. Mm -hmm. What's incredible. Okay. So let, let's just back up and just, when people are on GLP ones, what the, some of the first things it does is helping people it's decreasing their appetite, right? Everybody says, ah, I have less of an appetite now. I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to do this because something's been turned off or they get full faster. Right. And they even start noticing, gosh, I don't think I'm going to drink that alcohol. Like I, I'm going to have that beer. I'm not going to, oh, I don't think I'm going to smoke that cigarette or I don't think I'm, you know, things that would gratify them in different ways. They're not, they're not seeking that. And it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a shock right away of stopping that system, turning that system off a little bit. Well, when here's the big argument about GLP ones, it's like, well, you know, you're going to stop this GLP one after a certain amount of time and they're going to gain all their weight back. Right. Complete bullshit. Really? Wow. Complete. Bu well, if you're not doing your job, this is my, I'm, I'm a little outspoken about some things and I'm going to be outspoken here. If you don't understand how to use these as a physician, you shouldn't be using them. And you've got to understand that this is an opportunity what, like all opportunities, when you're trying to work on weight loss with anyone, what are you trying to really do? You're trying to get them into that better mindset of, of nutrition of and weights, yeah. you know, resistance training, aerobic training, all of those things that mean way more than what you're doing with this GLP-1, right? This is where your fitness wow. experience uh, really mm -hmm. helps. Uh, it, well, it's, you guys know it's the key to life. It's like you, if you start looking at every paper in the world, you know, anxiety, depression, cancer, all these things, they're all based off of what research on exercise and yeah. and that well this 
getting back to the GLP-1, what you have to understand is this is just, um, it's, a, it's a way to, to get some of these things working right, change phenotype, get them in that mindset of, okay, well, we're working on this weight now, so what else are we going to do? We're going to start talking about diet. We're going to, we have to institute some kind of exercise program, right? Because we know, you know, any, even stretching, Pilates, any of that stuff will turn off myostat and turn off things that where people will start losing muscle. Right. So, so you've got ways that you can, because any kind of weight loss program, I don't care what it is, people are going to lose muscle if they're not approaching it right. Right. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's calorie deprivation or you, yeah, your you, body's trying to reach metabolic balance. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just simple, straightforward evolution. It's yeah. an adaptation. So when people say, well, a GPL one, you're going to, or GLP ones, you're going to lose muscle. Well, yeah, you're going to lose muscle on any diet if you don't approach it correctly. Right. So just resistance training will turn off those things. But guess what? GLP ones actually have work on specific, they work on the atrophy gene, they work on specific genes in muscle to retain muscle. To retain muscle. That's proven. Also, bone density. Do you know that? They work on osteoblasts to keep bone. Hey, do you hear people talking about this? Hell no, because they're not, they're they're out there just promoting themselves because they can just follow a tagline. But I'm sorry, I'm, I'm no, no, go, go, go. Yeah. The, the, the emphasis I'm trying to create here is it's a, it's not, it's everybody wants that one magic thing. Well, yeah, this starts the process, has these amazing things, but you've got to get other things going. And, and, and with the diet stuff, you know, obviously we've talked about this, the protein, you have to increase the protein to, to compensate because people aren't going to want to eat right at the beginning. So, so you have all these mechanisms that you can stop that. And in fact, you can, hello, you can build muscle on GLP ones and you can build incredible lean mass on GLP ones. Um, but going back to this brain thing now, the coolest thing, or it's just so I get excited just thinking about it right now, talking to you about this. When you stop, or when you stop, when people start getting adjusted to the GLP ones, they're thinking that, uh oh, doc, I'm, this isn't working as well after they've lost 20, 30 pounds, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, do I need to take more? And it's like, no, you're ready. You know, we've been working, we've been waiting for this moment to start talking now about, I'm going to give you some, I mean, I don't tell people this right off the bat, but I guess I am now more and more now that I know this is true, is that guess what you've done? You've rewired your brain now to where, yes, you're going to get hungry again. Yes, you're going to have cravings like you did before. But you know what the change is now? Guess what the change is? Well, you've seen the path to the good side now by by resisting and not doing it. Or you've that, had right? time to develop a different relationship outside. Yeah, yeah, behavioral it's behavioral changes. and yes. you're, you're all right, yeah. but it it's, you can, guess what you can do? Mm. You can make the decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can, you have that craving, but you go, you know what? I'm not going to do that today. Yeah. That not is unbelievable. Anymore. It's like, it's, and it's, I used to, so I was always getting this feedback with my patients. Then, you know, I was struggling over time, like thinking, gosh, do I need to increase this? Or, and then I'd be, we just kind of work through it, work through it. And then I started again, hello, I'm a doctor. I got to listen to my patients, right? I learn everything from my patients. Mm. I don't think anything I say here is because I'm smart. It's because mm. I listen. Mm -hmm. And my patients started teaching me that they could make those decisions. And I'm like, holy shit, this is really doing that. Wow. This is the things we thought it could do. It's doing it. So I met the damn doctor presenting the scientist presenting this in Singapore, I was, my team was flipping out because they saw me like, oh my God, Doc's <laughs> going to lose it. <laughs> and I'm just, I was just, and I was telling her about, you know, what we're doing clinically. And she was just, she was excited. And it, so it, it's, so what's happened is there's a real rewiring that happens mm. and people can make decisions. And now, can it go bad again? The answer is, of course, it can go bad. If you, if you continue with the bad habits, you can rewire you can, it backwards. Yeah, if you continue, that's how you got there. You got yeah. there because yeah. it got inflamed, right? Right. So I don't. Did wow. I answer your question? Would you, would you mind well, pulling your mic just a little closer, like a, towards your this way? 
There you go. Did, you, did, did that answer that's that? Per, it did. So, okay, so I have a couple. You guys uh, just heard some stuff that I was saving for my PWC. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> you blew my mind, and I have a couple, Those, like, two thoughts really come to mind. Here. Yeah, so one is just to back you up. There's there there and this is pretty established. There seems to be a commonality or a root behind all, I don't know, for for lack of a better term, impulsive or addictive type behaviors. Mm, correct. Right? So if you take somebody who's an alcoholic and let's say you just eliminate for whatever reason they have no access to alcohol, you see a very high occurrence of other addictive type behaviors. When I was a trainer, I would see this with people who got gastric bypass. They all of a sudden couldn't eat a lot. But you'd see their their you know, rate of things like um, you know other other types of addictive type behaviors. In fact, they'd have to go through counseling to talk about this kind of stuff. So the root is in the brain. There seems to be some kind of patterning. And so what you're saying is these GLP one agonists seem to stop that. And then here's the other part: continuing down that path. Now I'm no longer engaging in that behavior. I'm not reinforcing those mm-hmm. pathways because when you create an addictive behavior here's the this is the crazy thing when someone's doing something over and over that's harming them and you're on the outside you always say to yourself why are they don't they know they're hurting themselves they do it just has become this kind of repetitive behavior this wiring and so what you're saying is they stop it long enough almost like training wheels just to get mm-hmm. them off that patterning maybe create some other patterns and they come off now they've got a little bit of room and space and that's what you're noticing it, that's very well said. And the, and you said that better so people can understand it better than probably what I said. <laughs> okay. um, and at the same time, you're fixing those cells in a way that they're not going to follow those patterns again. They're, mm. they're going to function efficiently now. Mm. Those cells that were in this hypothalamus, this, this, right. pecu- this specific area, they were, they were giving misinformation because of being in that mTOR state. They were just doing too much. Now you have control of that. And and what's even more interesting is I could go further and tell you how these people, how their lives change. I mean, they develop different hobbies. They 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 don't even know why they have. They wow. it they they can their their ability to follow um their tasks to just carry out action. They, they can do it. It's that it's like, there's no, that procrastination or those things that used to be part of their lives before. Not around is wow. it? it? It's there, but they can push through it. Wow. It's, no. it's, it's, a, it's really amazing when you, when you think about that type of an influence on, it's like you set this person free hmm. and, and it just, and once the, the, the privilege I have is getting to speak with these people as this is happening and learning what's changing. And as you inform them about what's really happening, cause I, I'm all, I'm a big believer in, in teaching the patients as much as they can understand to learn what's happening to them, because Absolutely. the more information they have, the more empowering they have it. Right. It's unbelievable how the, you just see this, like their their eyes, their face, they just light up and then they start to go down these paths like, oh my God, this is why this is happening. Oh my God. Uh, it's And so I, I get to hear all of that. It's just, uh, it's incredible. Wow. Now, what is like, so what does the typical timeline look like in terms of treatment? And so you start somebody on this mm-hmm. um, and it's crazy. I mean, this is all mind blowing to me because I was just thinking it was the fact that uh, it brought back like satiety and it was like a thing where it was like, mm-hmm. you know, it was helped kind of taper off a lot of the cravings, but the inflammation part is, is really really fascinating, but taking them through, uh, you know, months and then kind of like, um, getting feedback throughout the whole way. Like what, what does that look like in terms of like starting this, this protocol? So that, that's another great question about, and, and emphasizes how everybody is on a different mm-hmm. pathway. And I, I would say it's usually that from what I could tell you in my experience, that's something that's like, what I'm talking is about is about three months to six months down the road yeah. um, in, in their journey of trying to get to that point. But I'll tell you what's interesting 
is they showed these changes in the in the study that they did, um, specifically looking at the brain. They they showed they showed these changes occurred instantly, like like things happened very quickly, like within days. Um, so the 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 just by turning off some incredible machinery that's gone awry, that's gone bad, the, the brain can compensate very quickly. Um, <clears throat> but I think, I think it comes, so even though we know those things can change like that very quickly, I think it all comes back to what you were talking about in behavior and patterns. Mm -hmm. And it just takes time for the person to kind of realize, oh my gosh, I can, I can make these changes myself. And now what would look like, like sort of the best case scenario of like somebody going through this with their physician, but also then in, in combination with like a therapist or like a, you know, a, a training, you know, personal trainer or somebody to kind of guide them through like the best steps with this. So it usually it, so most of the people coming into this aren't focused on exercise or diet or any of those things yet. I, I'd say a lot of them. They're just, they're, they're, they know they got to get better. They know, they know that things have gone bad and, and they're just grasping for something to help them. And they've done everything in the world and it's, everything's not worked. And so that being said, with that being the more of the type of people you see, it's going to take, it takes me with those people, it takes me two or three months before I even can get them into the mindset of, diet and exercise mm -hmm. because they have to go, they have to get through, they have to first see the changes, right? They have to believe in your doctor. You have to believe in the process and just by the weight loss, it's incredible. Right. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people the weight loss, my God, the weight loss is a, that's a side effect. It's a, it's, it's a secondary thing. The reason I did this with you is because I'm changing your body chemistry. I'm, I'm really doing things to help you bone, muscle, brain, everything. So when they get into that state, they want to start, I think I talked to you guys about this. They want to start learning more. They, they're the ones who initiate. It's like, well, doc, what's next? What? Mm -hmm. It's not me saying, oh, you got to do this program. You got to do this program because this is the way it works. I, you got to hear it from them. And I'm, I'm going to say most of them are totally on, on point. Like, okay, what, what do I do now? And then when they're making those decisions to jump in to exercise, and diet, it's all over, mm -hmm. right? That's the kind of person you- that, This is right. how we and teach we clients. Absorb them, we, yeah. we talk about that with- Meet them where they're at. Yeah, we're yep. trainers with other trainers that you can't just get a client and then do this, do this, do that. If, you, if you're if you really good at your craft, you you lead them to ask those questions from you because when they come with that type of a, a mindset, they're more likely to follow through and execute it because it's them who's asking and want it versus you as a doctor saying, you got to do that. So- we train and coach like this, listening to you talk about this. And I don't know how much uh, research, you know, or that you've spent reading up on uh, ketamine, psilocybin, MDMA. It sounds kind of similar. What is going on in the brain? What we're finding out about that stuff of what you're talking about. Do you know if it's similar in any fashion? Do you know anything about that? So that that goes down a whole different, I know I tried different road of um yes it, well it's different um in fact my one of my best friends is a chemist for the biggest canadian company in the world d leading the research on mdma and psilocybin and doing all these new projects now with so you do know yeah i lecture on it okay um <laughs> it's totally different in in its approach and it's but it's all working on it's so it's so interesting this pathway in the brain right there it's very it's it's incredibly complicated but it comes back down to an inflammatory state of the brain okay it's it all comes back to that and it all comes back to kind of what in this area um um how are you going to change these how are you going to change these things called cytokines chemokines and proteases that affect cells in a bad way and so that what you just talked about those things work in different mechanisms to do that yeah and glp1s work in different mechanisms to do that and 
and GHRH is GHRP is VPC 157. All these things that we talk about, they all have different ways of working on these mechanisms. But what I'm my point is that these, it seems like they're all somewhat, they're changing the how we think or we perceive or how we, how. Well, let's say this. I, I think we'll get, that's a great, that's a great thing to bring up because I don't think it changes how we think. It gives us back the opportunity to use those networks that we just haven't been using right. That it, Interesting. That we, we're not changing it. We're giving you back something that you've lost. Okay. Hmm. The best way it's, it was explained to me, Dr. Seeds, it's like you're on the top of a mountain covered in snow and you go down the mountain and now there's already a path. And then you go down that same path again. And if you keep doing it, you make yourself a path that you're going to kind of naturally go down and going on any other way, you're met with lots of snow and resistance you might not even know that you can go another way because there's this trail, right? So this is why like a habit, the longer you've been, you know, doing a habit, the harder it is to break. And so it sounds to me like what it does is it gives you like an option. Hey, there's other paths you could take and you could create other pathways. And then the longer you do these other things, now you have different behaviors. Yeah, you could look at it when one pathway is dominated, all the other pathways are neglected. And, and that's kind of what happens. And, and so that that's probably pretty true what you said. Okay. Now one, I know people are thinking to themselves hmm. because peptides are different than drugs in, in this particular sense, in many sense, but in this particular sense, you take a drug, uh, an opiate, let's say, or, or anything, right? It, it, it attaches to certain receptors, the body or the brain adapts by downregulating some receptors or upregulating other receptors. So then you go off the drug and you have these um, exaggerated kind of withdrawal symptoms, right? So you go on an opiate, opiate receptors tend to downregulate. Regu then you go off the opiate. Oh my God, I feel this pain because my body's out of whack. D that doesn't happen with peptides. Like this one, like are, if we take a GLP-1 agonist, are we going to downregulate GLP-1 uh, um, receptors and then go off and get withdrawal? Mm -hmm. Or is, or, or is th that's not happening? So nobody knows the answer to that. If they say they do, they're uh, they're, they're wrong because okay. we we don't know your kind your 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 thought process is right. There are certain there are certain peptides that if you use too much of something, it can downregulate a receptor. But most of the peptides that we use, we use them in a physiologic fashion. We're we're just using enough to get a response and. That's it. We're not oversaturating a receptor. Got it. Now with the GLP ones, <coughs> an argument can be made that yeah, we are oversaturating a receptor for a while. But it's my concept of these GLP ones is that what it's always been is that you utilize them initially to get the beginning process of what you want, and then then we back down on the on the dosing. Now, is the dosing right now, Could it is that physiologic? No, I, I don't think it is. I think it is super physiologic that we're using to make these things happen because you, you have to initially. But I'll tell you, there have been long-term studies on the use of these showing no problem with saturation, not, none at all. Okay. But I do believe, I, I'm always a believer in, okay, when you've accomplished something, let's start backing down a little bit. But don't, I, I, I think GLP-1s, have a place for for longevity for a lot of things. So I I like it there as a, a continued um, possible resource for people. Do they need to keep doing it? No, but I, I think if you if you have the time to explain the importance of how a peptide like that can change efficiencies and so so what I'm actually telling you is that I, I think there's a world that's that's bright and amazing for GLP ones where the, there will be no issues like that at all. Are, and are you seeing any, anything like withdrawal in your clinical practice no, with people? No. So they'll go off and they're okay. No, is there absolutely. A, is there a hundred percent? No, I've, I haven't seen And I've prescribed, I mean, this is the other thing that drives me nuts. You hear these people that talk about it and don't practice it and say, Oh, my patients. And like, they have five patients. You, you've got to have thousands of patients that you're working sure. with to have, to really make some clinical uh, statements maybe. And even when I make them, I, I always say, you know, this is what I see in my practice, but I have not, I don't see anything like that at all I, as far as withdrawal from a GLP-1. I don't see that. Wow. Is there a, 
a type of client who this isn't for. And what I mean by that is like, we talk about the health benefits for the average person for incorporating fast occasionally, right? We know all the science that supports that there's health benefits to doing that occasionally, but there is a type of client that I would never recommend that to. An example is somebody that struggles with bulimia or anorexia. I'm not going to also, I'm not going to teach them to refrain from food. They already have a really bad relationship with food. And so that'd be an example of a client. I'm like, this probably isn't for you. Is there a type of client that you think that like, okay, this probably isn't for you um, that comes to mind? What you just said is correct. And it's a, again, it's the art of the of medicine or the physician and being able to realize those type of people that are, are that you could, you could harm more than hurt. Right. And, and, and those are the people that want to, that want to use it more to be in those states of those um, anorexic straits or, and, and, and that's something you have to be aware of. And I've, I, we all see it. I, I would be, uh, be remiss if I told you that I didn't see that and make those mistakes. I've, I've had those patients that I didn't realize were those type of people. And I, and I, it's a very difficult conversation mm. to have to back them down. And it's very, it takes a while, but you have to do it. it it's, you know, it's our responsibility to help them, but it's, it's tough. Yeah. It is. It's very tough. Now, another challenge is you, people are reading articles that, um, Ozempic is being sold out. It's really expensive. You could get semaglutide as a generic and that's still okay, right? Yeah. Um, the, I, uh, so I think there's probably a misnomer in, and there was some, there were some people pushing a message there on, on that. Um, I'm not going to, I don't want to get into the, I know everything behind that. Okay. And oh, interesting. And, uh, um, it's available for everyone. Are peptides able to be patented or is this different than drugs? Because I know that if Ozempic was a, like, I want like to know the sell. backstory. Yeah, is that, I wanna, was that a marketing I, 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 ploy? Is that know, what we're know, like, to? <laughs> Be as politically kind correct of like as you can. And I want to hear scarcity, you know, why demand. that was happening. Oh, there's, there's just lots of politics. That happen, mm. Is it like the De Beers mm. diamond people in the mind? Yeah. <laughs> <Restricted Right>. production. <laughs> yeah, we're only going to produce so much. Or or a new product that's going to be a competitor or a new brand that's going to be a competitor mm. or somewhere along those lines. Yeah, you guys are good. Just blink, <laughs> blink twice. Yeah, <laughs> if we're crazy. Well, we, yeah. like you, we've been doing this for a long time. You know, yeah. I've given you guys a lot today. Yeah. <laughs> so, so are they are they able to not be patented peptides? Are they different than than drugs? No, they're patented. Yeah, okay. they can be patented, but you can add you can add things to a peptide that yeah. can can yeah. make it different. Change it just a tiny. So these bit. are they're so now much I can, harder. Now I can market my my. Uh, well, I was just gonna say my Ozempic. Yeah, with, these these sound like they're else. they're much more challenge, much harder to wrap your arms around as a pharmaceutical company and say yes, you can't touch this. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're because it is in a it, it's a the. the the chemistry and the is more friendly in in allowing you to work with a a, a structure to make it even maybe even more effective uh, in certain ways. Do you foresee then? Because mm. look, the pharmaceutical industry uh, is um, I mean they've they've done some remarkable things, but they're also extremely powerful. And because of the way that our regulatory system works, I mean, to develop a, a medicine or a drug could cost you a billion dollars just to get through trials do you foresee them coming up with new regulations to make it easier to protect a, a peptide creation or do you think no nah, this is just it's, it's it is the way it is because i can I, I as a pharma company if i'm a pharma company and i see what you just said well you can just change this like i'm going to patent this but they're going to go buy it over here like i'm going to go lobby my congress people and say can we can we create some new laws so that i can they are do doing this? that that's they what are, i thought they are doing that Okay. They they're already trying to modify um, how many amino acids can be allowed in a in a peptide. That it, yeah, it, it's already been done. There's already those 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 senators that have flipped and you know are owned by those those groups and they make those changes overnight and they happen. Um, but that being said, the pharmaceutical companies are you know they're doing some great things because there are they're realizing that these that peptides are the cost of doing this is a lot less for them.
because they're because they're um, they're mimicking molecules that are already part you know known in the body, and so there's the the, the investment in something like that is much easier to to um, to uh, to recommend to your investors because of less tolerance, less side effects, less, you know, they know there's a better course of action because they're mimicking something we already know about, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to make something, tell a cell to do something. They do all these trials to see what the hell happens yeah, as a result. Yeah, so it, it it's opened a whole new world of, I mean, the the peptide science and studies around the world are, in, it's, it, it's insane right now where labs are focused on, on all of these different signaling agents that are, are, and they're easier to make. They're, they're not as expensive to make. Um, so that's even better. And that's, that's what we need. Yeah. So, cause I, I would imagine one of the benefits is you can identify peptides that are naturally occurring. You have a, pl a, a place to start from. Correct. Okay. Not to go off on a tangent, cause I know you're just a complete wealth of knowledge, but are you seeing them? Will you do tell more? that to my son? <laughs> hey, listen, I got kids too. Billy, did you hear that? Yeah, he's super smart. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that would go far. <laughs> not, not to go off on a tangent, but do you? Uh, are they doing more and more? Um, I guess initial trials in silica, where they're they're putting these peptides, changing them a little bit, putting them in an algorithm on a computer, boom, it yes. spits out. Okay. Yes. So yeah. that could, that's got to reduce it's, the cost uh, tremendously. Oh, the AI on this is crazy. Okay. It's, that's, cr it's crazy. Okay. So, uh, so just to kind of wrap around. There, there, there's a tetrapeptide that came out for COVID that actually showed, you know, that it was developed by AI that was, that showed what the capabilities of a tripept, a tetrapeptide could do. It never got to market. What? Weird. I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, Careful, you're going to get a shut down here, Dr. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> That's <laughs> enough <laughs> right there. We'll brother. talk off air yeah, about yeah. that just, one. Just, I'm, to, I'm just to kind of wrap our arms around this GLP, because I'm listening to you, and it just sounds to me like this could be a miracle substance. I I never say, it can't, nothing's a miracle um, but is there anything and, that even comes close to what the potential is for the, something like this? There are a lot. Yeah, absolutely. There are lots of other ones that we can talk about, but th this one is the, in my opinion, has the most far reaching specifically for okay. covering so many aspects of cell efficiencies. Um, it's the one, it's the one peptide that has just, inc you know, it has so many, when I say pleiotropic, it has so many different pathways it works on, you know, muscle, bone, brain kidney, liver, you know, you name it. It has, it has that kind of an impact and it's, but more so what I said in, is this, you know, how we're talking about changing with all these peptides, we're working on changing phenotypes and that's where we've got to get towards. That's precision medicine is headed towards not treating symptoms, but treating the phenotypes that change to get those people into those states. Okay. Right. Because Again, going back to insulin, you can give somebody insulin, you know, uh, 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 hyperglycemia when you have too much glucose in your body, you give somebody insulin. That's to, like a big Band-Aid though. Yeah, okay. it, it, it calms it down and people can survive and do things, but does it change what the cell, how the cell utilizes glucose and, and what it does in the machinery of utilizing that to make energy? No, it doesn't. Wow. But GLP-1s start to change that machinery. So just to kind of close this, this off here, because um, oh, people just, can go- I thought we just got going. Yeah, yeah. I know. This is, well, this is like the warm-up one. This right. is the one. Yeah, yeah. So to, to, we got more to go. Someone could go online, and because you could do this right now, uh -huh. and I think this has to do with just loopholes in the law, uh -huh. and they can find GLP-1 agonists, research chemical companies, and they can buy them online. Yeah. and self-administer them and people are doing this. Yeah, that's scary. Any words of warning, any advice for people who are doing this without going through a pharmacy, without going through a doctor? It's very scary. So I did a study. I actually did this study about, I think it was maybe eight years ago where I did that. And I took these, I won't say where from, but they were from multiple online sources of peptides to, I did the, uh, the, uh, uh, 
specifically looking at the makeup of what peptides were there, what wasn't there, what other substances. And it was, it was just not good. And I didn't even, I should have published it, but I would have been, I, uh, I'm still may publish it. Um, it was not good. And in that meaning, so a peptide is a specific molecule of amino acids that depend on it being specifically what that is. So if it's a 15 chain amino acid, it's 15. Well, all 15 of those have to be there. They have to be right and they have to be bonded correctly. Let's say you only have 13 that are there and then the other three amino acids are different. Well, you don't know what those, when that, when you take that peptide, those other three will break off and you don't know what they're going to do in so the body. So you can be doing all kinds of weird signaling in your body and not even know. You have no idea. And that 13 chain, that part of that 13, you have no idea. It's what's, and it's, those things are what you worry about with cancer and you worry about with uh, immune diseases and you worry about things that can go really wrong. And, and that's the different, I mean, you, you've got something that has to be tested correctly, right? It has to be certified. It has to be the, it has to have the antimicrobial check. It has to have the potency check. It, it's got to have, that's why you have things that have to be regulated and have to be looked at. That's why you have to, you know, why, why would you administer something in your body like that that isn't from a, a, a trusted source? Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and not not to mention, you could be someone could be taking these right now and be like, I don't feel, I feel fine. Yeah, but these could be effects that might take yeah, yeah. months, a year, two years, three years to manifest because may, maybe it's not toxic right out the gates, but you could be signaling something mm -hmm. that. It's, it's, not, it's not worth the risk. It's not even close. It's not yeah. worth the risk. You know, I actually want you to wrap up with something that I think Justin was kind of alluding to, and I think I want something a little more concise. I know that after this episode, we're going to have a, a ton of people that are going to want to start this, right? And so, and I know every you've already said it, that there's, you know, everybody has their own individual path and where you start them and when you can introduce. But if you were to kind of outline like, you know, the, and it doesn't have to be five steps, but like the five steps, if you get started on this, um, one, step one, obviously work with a doctor. Step two, uh, have somebody who is going to do some sort of therapy, you know, however many times a month with you. And then, you know, is there is there a process, that, a general process that you would recommend most people that were going to go down this pathway of their, their kind of their mindset or what they should do? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not. What, what do you so, mean? so, okay. In an ideal, in an ideal world. So for example, like when we get, when I get a client and, it, and in general, what I tell people before I start making them eat all crazy and different, I actually say, listen, I just want you to track and pay attention to what you're eating so we can get, a, become aware of what that is before I put you on some crazy workout routine five days a week and train like this. It's like, Hey, let's go to the gym and we're just going to do these few things. Right? So I try and help clients build good behaviors before I kind of throw them through the gauntlet. Like, so when you think of somebody who's going to listen to this episode, they're going to go try Ozempic or whatever, you know, and, and they get going. What are some things that you would tell them as they start through that process? Well, hopefully they're working with a physician that has the experience to start implementing stages of, of uh, a multiple discipline approach, you know, to what, they're really there for. And that's, that's to change their lifestyle. Right. So yeah, I, I guess it's just, it, again, it's really tailored on the response of the patient and where, you know, the, the other thing I'll tell you, it's, it's not an easy road, you know, using Ozempic, you've got to be in constant communication with your patients because it's, it is something that not everybody, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't really talk <coughs> about that. Um, people can have side effects of, of nausea and fatigue and things that you have to work them through at the beginning. Um, so it's not like it's just this thing you start and everything's great. It's yeah. you, you've got to, they have to know about that when you're starting that. And so they can, they can be expecting that, but we build things into the programs to, to, so they can be ready for that. You know, that, that you're, they're, you're, um, you're preparing them and they feel confident in yeah. their approach and they understand that this is coming and that, 
and you're, they're undergoing a metabolic change in their body. I mean, you're changing the metabolism of these people that, they, of course, they're going to get fatigued. Of course, some things are going to happen, but you work with them and pushing them through that. And does that answer your question? Yeah, because I, so you are. So what I'm hearing is that, you know, this is not something that you just should buy on the line or buy online and start doing your own. You should have a physician that, and not just any physician, a physician that actually is, taking people through this process Correct. and and can coach you through the different feelings you're going to have, whether that be the nausea or whatever, and then also how to maybe implement a strength training routine and then diet to work you through this in the well, future. Like, would it be safe to say, uh, obviously, step one, do this with a doctor. Correct. Step two, find a doctor who's got some experience with this, who Correct. also you can be in contact with, Correct. not just, here you go, I'll see you in three months. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And, 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 and that is focused on those other changes. Um, I, I mean, wouldn't you want that? You, you want that person that's thinking about all those, those other aspects of my life to make this really work long-term, right. right? Cause the goal is long-term. And, and again, the goal is to get them really interested in their health of where they're paying more t attention to their nutrition and they're paying more attention to exercise and then once that happens, oh my gosh, it's a totally different world and it's amazing because then, then you can start going down these roads like what you guys, uh, what these other things you guys talk about, these other peptides, you know, the BPC, C CJCs and the modest Cs, SS31, all these things that can help enhance efficiencies. When you've started that process with these people and they're already now ingrained in that um, they're zealots for health. Yeah. It, it's a lot of fun then because yeah. they're, they're, they're changing other people's lives too, because people see their changes and they're, they're happy to share their experiences with them. And, and then it, it just kind of keeps growing because they help them go down that journey. You know, I, I've been able to see that too, which is really cool. Um, it, it's, a uh, there's a reason we're all talking about this. The reason is it works. The reason is you're, we're getting healthier people that are taking control of their lives again. And I think that's really the most important thing. It's not people telling you, you know, take this box and this will make you better. Do this program. This will make you better. You're actually getting a whole mindset of, Hey, you can make yourself better and you can, you'll dictate this pathway moving forward. Well, Dr. Seeds, uh, this has been great. Yeah. This has been phenomenal. You've really shed a lot of light because we're all, uh, I mean, being in the fitness industry, we're always very skeptical whenever something comes out, medicine or otherwise, it that says, hey, this will, yeah, but um, I mean, you have the background, you're also a fitness person, so it's, it's, this, is, this is incredible. I can't wait to see where will, this goes. Will you tell my son I'm a fitness person too? <laughs> <laughs> I think he can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you coming on, Dr. Yeah. Seeds. Yeah, yeah. Thank been, you very much. It's been a Great pleasure. Show. Thank you, guys. Thank you.